a kid was asking me about going to Paris. I was like, you're not going anywhere. We're staying at home. We'd, I mean, we haven't got the money for that, basically, he said. We haven't got the money to travel. So he was speaking earlier about having money troubles. It seemed like hinting at it. But again, Brennan's money troubles aren't the same as our money troubles, right? His money troubles means he can't afford a new pair of dunks, right? Or maybe a new roll cage. But it's find it very interesting, the timing. Suddenly he's not talking about that. And then he suddenly pops out with a new fucking Ford truck. So I'm wondering, how much does it cost to flip in lease these things? Because I've got a picture of what they look like there, right? This is a thing. He's got a Ford TRX Ram truck. It's fucking beautiful, to be fair. I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm not the biggest car guy in the world. I do like my cars European and kind of old. You know, I'm a big BMW, um, M3, E-Series, Mercedes CLS type of guy. Old, you know, Volkswagen, Golfs, maybe like Mark 3s to Mark 5s, GTIs. I'm a Ford Focus guy. I've got a very specific type of taste when it comes to cars. But I also do appreciate um, pickup trucks. And this is really nice. I'm, I, I don't know why he keeps getting it in white. What is that because it's the most popular color of, of new cars nowadays? Or because you guys drive it? Because I don't understand why you'd want a pickup truck that's white. If you're going to be using it as a pickup truck or using it to fucking run, run around town and do your things, and you'd want a color that doesn't show up dirt so often. I don't really know why everyone keeps getting this white color personally. I would maybe get a color that's a bit darker. Um, oh, it's the cheapest color. Okay, cool. There we go. Stingo explained it. it's cheapest color. So I want to know how much is it to lease these things? Because people are saying he's leasing them as an excuse or as a reason to explain why he keeps buying it. Because my question is, I don't pocket watch, but how does he afford all this stuff? Because, you know, he's not speaking about his money troubles anymore, but he still has a baby on the way. Allegedly, his wife is about to give birth to a new baby daughter. He has he's going to have three mouths to feed plus paying the salaries of Chris D'Elia, Eric Griffin and his partner Brian Callen and everyone that works behind the scenes at Thick Boy. That's a lot of fucking money. And even if you're leasing, having a lease on like free cars is still a lot of money, no? If you're leasing the Ferrari, I don't think he's leasing the Porsche. I think he owns that. And then maybe some other cars. Maybe he's got that, he's got that Ford Bronco, hasn't he? He's got that newer Ford Bronco. That's a lot of money to lease cars. It's still not, you know, it's not like $500 a month total i'd imagine let's just check anyway so let's see let's see how much a lease is um for this car i still think it's quite considerable i'm assuming but let's see what it says here um da, da, da. should we check this is that the one the ram that one or it's written ram truck okay don't say lease they say lease here maybe they say lease here. let's say lease options um oh people are saying what were you saying here because again, if you if you got more information on like car like buying things and shit, and you know what that is, let me know in the comments. Because I'm confused at how he's able to afford all of these things at once. Because it's still a bit of a nut. It's still a bit of an expense, isn't it? Um, people are saying here what um, he's got. A, what was it say here? Trading. That's, so that's what. Yeah, that's like you're trading in a phone, right? You trade in your old your car, and then you get some of that off the value, and then you use those funds to pay for the new car. I'm assuming, right? That's what you mean. Leases his vehicles. But again, hear me out, guys. Again, I'm not... Because if, if I'm buying a car, I'm buying outright. My, my, my question why I'm confused about this, I'm thinking to myself, let's imagine he owns one of his cars, the Porsche. He's leasing the Ferrari. He's leasing the Lambo truck. He's leasing this Ford um, TRX and maybe another one. But it's free cars you're leasing and free newer cars. Not like you're leasing a Prius. You're leasing free, new, high-performance, luxury cars. Isn't that a lot of money per month? The cost of all those free cars. Isn't it going to be like a two grand each? That's six grand you're spending on leasing. That's probably maybe equivalent to your mortgage. Like, how are you affording that? Plus, a kid, like, it's just why. Like, maybe he just makes a lot of money on his podcast, but we don't really know. Maybe that's probably it. Maybe, he, like I said in the other, other, other pod, maybe it's a lot of money. Oh, it's cheaper than owning them, is it? Okay, Eddie D. Ah, okay, I see what you mean. So there's a little game you can play. There's a little, like, there's a little finesse, right? Okay, let's see this. Let's see this This one. Northwest Christ. Okay, people are saying it's cheaper to own them. I saw, what's it? Hold on. It's Patrick Spicer. Let's, let, me, let me scroll back up. He said he sold car for 10 years. What do you say here? Patrick Spicer says most likely that TRX car is 1200 per month, you're saying, right? So 
let's say out of the three cars, out of the port, out of the Lamborghini truck, out of the whatever car he's got I mentioned, out of the Lambo truck, out of this, maybe the the TRX is the cheapest lease, isn't it? Out of the three, so a Lambo truck to rent, sorry, a Lambo truck to lease per month. How much would you guys say that is? Is that like two grand then, three grand? Yeah, sure, for cheapest. Uh, let's see this one. Ram Truck Canada. Okay, cool. There's you go. Lambo Truck is max 2K a month. So he has to be clearing what? To afford all those and insurance and stuff, you have to clear maybe what? ten. You have to have 10 grand a month surplus that you're making to make those make sense. Or maybe, or is there a pos Can you lease a car without insurance? Because he's white. He's not going to get pulled over, is he? That's the thing that's really good about the leasing with him because he's leasing with these expensive cars, but he's a white dude. He's not going to get pulled over as much as I do. Well, if I get pulled over all the, all the time, I have to make sure I have all my everything sorted. I have to make sure I've got insurance. I've got my tax, my MOTs done. I can't take any chances. I can't have my car, my windows tinted and shit. So maybe that helps. If you can just lease them outright with no insurance and shit and just drive a bit dirty, then it can kind of save our money. People are saying here, what? Um, nine out of 10 people with nice cars are leasing them for a contracted period of time, Eddie D says. Can you even lease a TRX? They're kind of rare. The truck sticker price is close to 100K. Oof, I didn't know that. It's 100K, the TRX. It doesn't look like it, innit? Shit, it's a lot of money, bro. But I guess it's built like it's built like a tank, innit? Probably very versatile so it makes a lot of sense so china mac chris mac are you saying he spends 10 grand a month together to pay for all these cars you think leasing wise more than 10 grand <laughs> i don't know again maybe i'm just thinking from my lowly position that i'm in at the moment i can't imagine spending ten thousand a month to lease cars that is insane to me that money could be best spent being saved or you know to buy a car out outright or to like go on holiday or to you know eat at some nice places but like 10 grand on cars they still have to put fuel in wow maintenance you can't leave the lot without insurance okay brandon okay sorry i take it back then that's not possible you can't leave the lot in without insurance how about if you but brandon how about if you go to those guys on instagram how about if you got a deal with those dudes on Instagram that have like their own little like leasing service thing? Will those guys ask for insurance? Because because we have guys like that that is in the UK. We have that kind of scene in the UK too. Due to like lease luxury cars out and shit to people. He doesn't lease. He's dumb enough to buy. Wow. But again, this is why. Um, let's see what we are saying here. Uh, this is from a forum. Do the calculator on a RAM website and they'll give you an idea. Finance in okay, cool. There's a web there's a website that has the finance thing. Um Thanks guys. The best leasing price is one thousand. Yeah, so people are saying it's true. Oh my god. You have to put a down payment on. I didn't know that. I don't know you have to do that for leasing cars. Do you, do you get that I'm assuming you get that down payment back in it? It's like a it's like a guarantor, I'm assuming, of some sense. I didn't know you had to put a, a down payment of seven grand plus whatever you have to pay per month. Fucking hell, bro. He must be making a lot of money. The lease program on the vehicle at the moment is not very good. I'm hearing 222, 222 models within July. So yeah, what someone was saying was true. So I guess these TRX models are quite cheap, are quite rare, aren't they? Um, but yeah, anyway, all this to say, all this to say, yep, gas is about 560 gallon in Sacramento. If Shaw is outright purchased a Ferrari, then he is mentally challenged. So you wouldn't advise someone to purchase a Ferrari, even a rare one. Even if they bought like an, a flipping, what's that one called? Um, an Enzo and shit. Um, you wouldn't advise them to buy those type of, type of things. They wouldn't appreciate over time. I don't know why I thought a Ferrari would be like a Rolex or something. Maybe again, that's my naive, naive naivete. I thought if you bought like a, a 90s Ferrari, it, it, it'll be like a Rolex over time. It will appreciate because not many people have them. <laughs> I guess I was wrong. <laughs> the moment I park it, you know, in my area, that shit will get fucking lifted. You have to buy a Ferrari. Okay, true. You can't lease them anyway. You can't lease Ferraris. Um, 
Enzo doesn't have AC. <laughs> okay, Tommy, good point. <laughs> it's the Bluetooth speakers in that Enzo. Um, all right, so now we know Brendan is, you know, okay with taking the podcast one deal. He doesn't seem to be bothered by it. So then I had to check over and see how much this guy must be making a lot of money in it. And I think he reminded me of um, a podcast I did before where I said, where somebody's post on the fire and the kid read it about how much money he, or how much interest he was, he, no, about how much, how many clicks he was getting through on Happy Hippo or something. I forgot. And it was a really high number. It was actually insanely way higher than we actually anticipated. And I think he must have made like, I don't know, somewhere around the 300k mark in, in that short time he was doing the deal with, I think it was a CBD company actually. He made like 300k just flat out on that deal from the affiliate link. So you can imagine these guys probably make quite a bit more money than we assume they do because we're only of myself. I'm only viewing it from like the podcast view numbers, but podcast view numbers aren't an indication on the money they make because they all, they arrange or sort out specific podcast advertising deals that have nothing to do with views. That's the thing that people mistake or that I mistake sometimes or forget about. They actually have separate deals that just have nothing to do with the podcast. They're just deals about like, you know, hey, you're a celebrity, you're well known. We're going to give you this amount of money. So I'm assuming that kind of, those sort of fronts, if someone gives you 50K to advertise some shit, you can use that money easily to lease a few cars and it? it makes a lot of sense. But I, I don't know. I just think for me in my head, I'm like, I've already got two mouths to feed, two growing boys, right? Two growing boys who, you know, let's be fair. And let's be like, you know, let's not be rude. But Brendan Schub's kids don't look at the types of who are going to leave home at 17, 18. They're going to be boys that are probably going to live at home for a while. So you're going to have to look after those two growing boys, hungry boys, boys who have like expensive tastes, who have grown up with expensive things. So they're not going to, you know, expect anything less than that. Then you're going to have a daughter, number three, who's going to be probably a carbon copy of her mum. She's going to want Balenciagas when she's like two years old and shit. She's going to want a Cartier watch. There's a lot of like expenses coming up. So for me, I would think if I was Brendan and I'm seeing how my career is going, I'd be a little bit wary and and dubious about spending money on a fucking on a fucking TRX truck and shit. As nice as it is, as beautiful as it looks, I understand it's a fucking gorgeous car to drive, I'm sure. Seeing that fucking, you know, what you call it, tearing up, tearing it up down the street and you sitting in it must be a great feeling i think that's one of the things that guys like about pickup trucks they immediately give you a dad boner when you sit inside the drive when you sit in the driver's seat and you you know you fucking put the car into drive and you go it kind of gives you an immense man boner so i can understand why dudes love it and it's a little bit of a it's a little bit of a working class cosplay thing in it because when you have a pickup truck it kind of looks like you do manual labor but you don't really you know it looks like you're like a handyman. You work with your hands. You're out there in the field, in the sun, wiping the sweat from your brow as you're digging and shit, you know, pointing at your fucking staff and your workers to do this and do that. It looks like you're doing that, but really you're using this to fucking go from your home to the, from your home to the high ice house, from the ice house to some fucking baddie's house and back again. That's all you're really doing day to day. But it does make you feel like a real man. I understand why people fucking love these things. I understand why they get a fucking dad boner of these things. But again, if I've got two kids to feed. Oh, for fuck's sake, Eric C. Not you again. Big up Eric Sir C. Sir Alex isn't worthy of licking Pep's boots. Blue heart trophy. Blue heart uh, trophy. Sake. Blue heart trophy. I've got to find a way to ban your account, Eric. See, I keep saying it, but I've got to find a back-end way of locating your IP address and banning you from this stream, banning you from this chat and banning you outright. But no, big up, big up, Eric. See, I appreciate you, brother. Thank you for the super chat, bro. Um, yeah, anyway, looking back at the Happy Hippo deal that was announced via PR, PR News, you can see it was a big deal. They've got a big spread about it. They've got Brendan's happy face there holding the Happy Hippo shit. That's been a miracle to him and helped him out and shit. So clearly... There's a lot of money out there to be made with podcasts that allow you to get a truck in the midst of everything that's going on. Everyone is financially screwed and worrying. But for some reason, Brendan's out here buying himself new cars. Interesting, isn't it? I find that shit interesting, bro. Everyone's out here struggling. Everyone doesn't know where the next meal's coming. They're worried about signing deals. But Brendan's out here. Brendan's out here doing the business getting himself a fucking new truck 
interesting interesting interesting